So uh, thank you guys for coming. Can you guys hear me in the back? Is that okay? Perfect. Uh, I know it's a tough time, 3.30. I, I was just in a panel that said 10.30 is the best time to have a panel because you have the most energy. So I suspect 3.30 is the worst time to have a panel. So we're going to try to make it super energizing for you uh, before you have to go out and uh, get some uh, happy hour drinks and dinner. So I, I assure you that this is going to be entertaining. Uh, these guys guaranteed it. So uh, <laughs> we'll get going from that. We're not Let, getting paid otherwise. Yeah, right? no, 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 uh, yeah no tricks here. Um, uh, before I do get started, let me, I, I want to set the stage because when they, when they give me this panel, uh, we had the, the word Bitcoin and, and I want you to know that we're not going to talk about Bitcoin. This is not a Bitcoin discussion. It is uh, somewhat related uh, to a currency though. Uh, and so I want to set the stage before I let our panelists uh, introduce themselves and I'll introduce myself as well. Uh, um, and and we'll, we'll get a really heated discussion here because I think these guys are the best at, at what they do in the lifelong learning space. So we'll talk about that. Um, before I get started though, um, you know, the way I thought about this panel is that, um, you know, when you think about the degree, the college degree that you get, it's a piece of paper, it's a promissory note. And if you look at any dollar bill you pull out, we have a, a promissory note from the US government. So question I, I ask these guys, and I will continue, I will ask them in this panel is, what is the degree and how do we unbundle the degree so that we can apply it uh, to a lifelong learning environment? So ultimately, if we're successful in this panel, I'd like to sort of think deeply about what you get with that piece of paper, much like what you get with a dollar bill, is not worth anything unless the government, the U Federal Reserve says it's worth something, in the case of a college degree, is not worth anything unless the institution that gave it to you uh, says it's worth something, right? That you learn something. So it's provocative, uh, but you know the questions we'll, we'll, we'll tackle here is whether that piece of paper can be awarded by other institutions. Could it be awarded by industry? Could it be awarded by nobody? Could it? Do you even need it? Or could it be? Does it have to be awarded by? Uh, a college, a traditional sort of institution? And is there other types of, piece of pa pieces of paper that we'll need in the future to make uh, lifelong learning a reality? In the world I live in, ideally, much like the dollar makes the economy go smoothly uh, in most cases, um, I think a common understanding what this piece of paper, the knowledge that you have, will get, make the, our lifelong learning journey as employees uh, and employers and leaders uh, much much more of a smoother ride because I think right now we have a lot of different types of uh, certification uh, and so we'll tackle that subject. Before we go there, uh, I'll introduce myself. I'm uh, Sergio Monsalve. I'm, uh, I've been a venture capital investor in, life, uh, in the lifelong learning space, future of work, and other software related areas uh, at Norwest Venture Partners. Most recently, I also joined Stanford as a uh, as a lecturer uh, in their graduate school of education. So I teach a class uh, around edtech, entrepreneurship, and innovation, where we have speakers and we learn a lot about this stuff. Uh, and I'm also on the board of, uh, on the board of trustee of uh, Harvey Mudd College. So I approach, uh, I, I hopefully get closer to the college uh, environment through my work at Stanford and Harvey Mudd. And then uh, I'm also on the board of Udemy as well. It's a lifelong learning uh, platform in San Francisco. With that said, I'd like to have these guys introduce themselves with the mindset of what I just described, that how do you think about this future of work world and the world of certification, not certification? How do you make sense of this new world uh, of lifelong learning as an adult? Go ahead. Great. Uh, my name is Matt Cooper. I'm the CEO of Skillshare. Um, prior uh, experience, I was at uh, Upwork, uh, previously Odesk. Uh, for five years. I was then CEO of a company called Visually, which was an uh, uh, online freelancer platform for creative work and, and visual content, uh, and then joined Skillshare about two and a half years ago. So I've been kind of in and out of the uh, future of work world, freelance workforce, creative workforce. Um, and when I think about sort of Skillshare, and uh, so we are an online learning platform for creatives. And kind of the two trends that we are really betting our business on, uh, number one is around creativity. Uh, when you think about all of the industries that are being rewritten by automation, uh, technology innovation, um, the one thing that's really hard to automate is creativity. So if we can provide 
um, whether it's personal or professional opportunities to connect the dots from one discipline and apply them to the next, uh, you can actually create a lot of value uh, both as a business, as an uh, individual employee. Uh, so we want to help people connect those dots and give them a very broad um, uh, educational uh, opportunity. Uh, the second is on the future of work. About 80% of our teachers are freelance. 80% of our students are either freelancers already or want to be freelancers in the next two years. So we see kind of our demographic, 80% of our users are younger than 40. Uh, that's what they want. They want that creative uh, occupation. They want the self-determination and kind of the personal ownership that comes with being freelance, independent, running their own show. Uh, so those are certainly the trends that are driving our business. We have, we have close to 8 million uh, users on the platform. We have 26,000 classes taught by 8,000 teachers all over the globe. We grew at about 125% last year. So certainly the, uh, the trends that, that we're highlighting uh, are ultimately driving our business. I think for us, you know, the question around credentials, um, I, I know that when I hire, yes, I look for proxies. And education, uh, I think, has traditionally been the, uh, the primary proxy. I think that is actually uh, not as useful as it used to be particularly within the design creative space, I can see your work. I can see your portfolio. You've got it online. I can see what you've actually done, not what your uh, degree indicates you might be able to do. Um, and even going back to my, my first job as in investment banking, they were taking English majors, accounting majors, finance majors, history majors, sticking them all in the same training class and spitting out investment banking analysts. So um, I think the days of the degree as the primary proxy are, are waning uh, because there's just too many other ways to see what people have actually done uh, as opposed to what we think they might be able to do. Krishna. Yeah. So thanks, Sajiv, first of, all, first of all, inviting me as part of the panel. Hi, everyone. I'm Krishna. I'm the founder and CEO of Simply Learn. Simply Learn was started as a blog about uh, 10 years back, and today it, it provides digital skilling courses to professionals. And that also speaks about how the market is growing. Like 10 years back, there was hardly any of these companies who were in existence to provide people with some kind of courses so that they can fast track this, their career. What I see in the last few years is that there's a lot of talks going on about lifelong learning, but there, is, there are still a lot of people who are still in this denial mode that should I go for it or should I not go for it? So I don't think we have been able, we have all of us put together has have been in a position to, to convince everyone that this is for real. If you want to be continuously employed in a 70 year lifespan, then you need to continuously add something. And I see the market going there in, in next couple of years for sure, wherein the debate will get settled in favor of doing something. Now the question comes whether you want to do this lifelong learning through a university and get a, some kind of short degree, or you want some other kind of credential. In my own personal uh, opinion and my experience of like having trained about a million users so far on my platform, I think some kind of credential helps. Now that credential need not come from an accredited university, it can come from some organizations which are professional bodies or it can come from some of the companies who are seen as a leader. Like for example, if someone wants to learn say cloud skills, they are better off getting a certification from a Microsoft or from an Amazon, not necessarily from, a, from an accredited organization or a very popular organization like Stanford. So I see that uh, having some credential really helps in starting up a dialogue. If you are applying for a job, of course you can show your skills that I know this job, here are the projects that I have done, or here are, here are some of the work that I have done in the past. But how do you start the dialogue? To start the dialogue by saying that, look, I'm certified by Amazon or I'm certified by Microsoft, that makes life so much easier. So I see them playing a role for sure. So in an ideal world, people will go to a university because not only they want to learn skill, they'll go to a university because they want to learn a lot of life skills, right? You, you come out of your comfort of your home, you go to a university, you network with your friends, you learn how to grow up with people that you have never met in your life and trying to manage, like kind, trying to kind of collaborate as well as compete at the same time in a college campus. I think that's a very, very important life skill. And after that, when you want to acquire skills, you can go to any of those providers that exist in the market and, and learn that. But the key thing that I think we should all keep on talking about the, is that this is for real. If you don't keep on reskilling all the time, however manner that you do, do to a degree, do with a certificate, or just learn a skill without going for credential, that's going to be a must to to ensure continued employment in future. Jonathan. Uh, 
Hello, everybody. Jonathan Monk. I'm the head of corporate development at DeGreed and oversee our skills business division. Um, I actually don't think that, um, I may get kicked off for saying this, but I don't think that knowledge is the currency at all of the 21st century. Um, I think skills are uh, the currency of the 21st century. There's, for me, there's a hierarchy. There's information, there's knowledge, there's skills, there's wisdom. Um, I can learn anything anywhere in five seconds by asking Google information. I can get information instantly. I can get knowledge quickly. Um, skills are harder to get. You have to apply the knowledge in some way and actually be able to perform tasks. And that's what companies want. They don't want knowledge. They want people to be able to do stuff and be able to do specific things at certain levels of aptitude. So DeGreed's mission is uh, we are a skill development and a skill measurement uh, platform. We sell to the enterprise. And we believe that the world, the labor economy, whatever you want to call it, uh, wants to speak the language of skills. Um, but it can't. And the reason why it can't is we don't have a good currency to what Sergio was talking about. We don't have a, a good currency for that. Um, at the same time, we have more currencies than we've ever had. If you kind of look at the trend over the last 10 years, there's been this explosion of different ways to learn, all these new platforms and catalogs. And what we are starting to see is now an explosion of different ways to signal um, completion and knowledge mastery of some of that content. So you have open badges, you have you know, boot camps, you have course, you know, course uh, certifications and so forth. There's, there's all these new currencies in the market. Adding more currencies doesn't solve the problem. What we need is a single universal currency that the supply side of the market and the demand side of the market recognize and value. That is what makes a currency really valuable. Um, you know, initially you want it to be a gold-backed currency to prove that it has worth, but over time, sort of that matters less because people kind of trust it. Um, so that's kind of the business that we're in, um, is how do you help people develop the skills that they need, and how do you help people signal the skills that they have so that they can transact in that marketplace. And that marketplace might be within the walls of your own business, right? You might be sitting and saying, how do we match the skills inside the business to the jobs to be done inside the business, but the broader application of the labor market holds the same way. How do we match the supply and demand more efficiently? So that's kind of the, the goal that we have at Degree. Carl. So you talked about skills, and I completely uh, agree. I mean, it's not about knowledge. It's completely about skills. But I would say even more than that, it's not technical skills. I mean, yes, we need technical skills, and I'm talking, and I'll, and I'll say a few words about about Amdocs in a second, but the technical skills are not what makes the difference. It's the human skills, actually. Um, so, so Amdocs is a, is a 25 plus thousand employees uh, company spread around 80, uh, 80 countries, basically providing product and services to IT, uh, of IT product and services to what used to be the telco industry. Today, it's service providers of all sorts. Um, and, uh, and I had learning and talent development, and my task is actually get people to actually absorb, first and foremost, get to become lifelong learner. Um, because no longer the days that we can actually teach them or get them to get the new skill, they need to figure that uh, by themselves. And one of the things that, we, uh, that maybe I'll talk about it uh, if I'll have time is, is a, a way that we started to map the skills for the people. Um, but we acknowledge that it's not about the technical skills. That's not make, makes the difference. Uh, eventually, our customers are not working with us because we only can deliver a code. They're working with us because we work with them, because we understand the challenges, because we can transform those challenges to eventually code, but because we, we work with them. And that's what makes all the difference, in my eyes. So let me start with you, Harl. Uh, we'll, we'll go backwards because in this, in this panel, uh, as, you, as you know, uh, you're, you're sort of the user and, and, uh, and sort of utilizer of the platforms that these guys uh, developed. How do you think about uh, this, this notion that Jonathan brought up around the currency being a singular currency, something that can get translated from Amdocs to some other company? 
uh, as an employee that is going to have uh, multiple careers. How do you think about that in your organization? Ideally, you'd like to keep people in your organization forever and ever if they're oh. good. But you know, you eventually have to sort of train them, and, and, and they have to move on. How do you think about all that and the life, the sort of the journey of your employees? I think it's I think it's interesting. I think there's place for that. But at the end of the day, let's let's acknowledge that at the end of the day, we do have a replacement for that. I mean, when I'm when I was hired, I was hired based on my CV to some extent about my best my experience that I was able to communicate and my recommendations and. And the different sorts. So, and, and yes, there's a amount of risk, but people can see that. So, um, I truly believe that. Um, and we actually had a conversation with one of our business units that we we try to implement kind of a I want to call it a LinkedIn-like platform where people actually um, 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 talk about their skills. We don't want to test them. We don't want to assess them. And the interesting conversation went that, and I'm talking to a business unit that has 4,000 employees, and the conversation went like, so how do we do that? And, and what happens if I'm saying that I'm an expert on Java? Then we'll know that in a, few, in, in, in a few days. I'll get a task in Java, and I'll suck at it. Sorry for my French. But, and, and, so, and all of a sudden, it becomes not a conversation about my career development. It becomes now a conversation about how I'm living the, the, the company because I lied about my expertise. So if you make it that way, and if you hire me today, you'll know about my expertise fairly really fast, right? Um, yes, there's a risk about it, and, and we want to minimize it, but we do have a, a way. All of us are hiring people, and we know when we made a good decision or when we made a wrong decision. Uh, it would be nice to get some kind of a, a nice certificate, but as you said, I mean, universities are not providing that, and I'm not sure that there's one, uh, one body, one... Uh, sign someone that can sign on the quality of, uh, of people. Uh, so it has to be based on what the people are actually telling them about themselves. That's, one, once again, my, my view. Got it. Um, so let me ask you guys this. Um, uh, along those lines, so if we were to create uh, uh, a perfect world where, you know, the bachelor's degree from certain organization, college, you know, is worth something to somebody because not just because of the skills, it's also the the, the dorm life, uh, you know, I think there's plenty of research out there that shows that, you know, if you've done, uh, built your social capital inside the four years you were there, you, you're going to come out with a better opportunity, not just the skills, the hard skills or the soft skills. Um, how do you think about uh, applying that model or, or throwing it away and building your own as it relates to the 21, 21 years old to 65 years old? Because we, we got a model for 18 to 21, whether it yeah. works or doesn't. I think, uh, I think there is a model out there. Whether we, we break it apart and rebuild it, that's another question. But you guys are kind of more, more focused on the lifelong learning space. So think about that, and how, how would you think about um, it, you know, the ideal world in your uh, lifelong learning environment? Yeah. So from uh, my perspective, what, so what we do on Simply Learn platform is that we try to simulate a classroom learning environment online. So we do, we do see a value wherein people who are learning the same course at the same time, coming together on our platform, learning from each other, learning from the instructor. But when they learn from each other, it's not only about learning a hard skill on how are you, sol how are you solving a problem. It's also about where do you work, what do you do, and relating to their work experience, what these guys are doing, and eventually also looking at that network for their career advancement, wherein I'm looking for an opportunity. If there's an opportunity in your organization, can I talk to you? So I, we see this happening uh, all the time. Traditionally, what has happened in this lifelong learning space, or, or let's call it, uh, I, I don't think that lifelong learning has become a reality. We are talking about it, but a lot of people have still not accepted that fact. There are two uh, broad models of skilling. One is that you go to a video learning pl platform and learn at your own pace, at your own uh, speed, uh, completely on your own. And then you go to a bootcamp provider wherein you are part of a program for two weeks and you learn there. What we are trying to do is that we are trying to merge both of this together, that you learn at your own convenience online, but learn in a cohort of people who are trying to learn the same skill at the same time. So we definitely have seen a lot of uh, uptick there. I also wanted to, uh, to add to what uh, Harel was saying that uh, he, people, if someone is claiming that they have a skill, they will get to know within the organization. But when we have engaged with a lot of uh, Fortune 100 organizations, what we have seen is that you want to launch a program, and I'm talking more about hard skills because that's the area that we operate in. 
if you launch a program, let's say on any, pick up any, let's say data science, and you, ex and, and you expect people to sign up for that program which is sponsored by an organization, that's one scenario. The other scenario is that the same data science program, everything is the same, and you attach a certification. That certification can come from either a certificate from a university or a certificate from another, another organization, let's say, for the namesake, say, IBM. We have seen a much higher acceptance rate there because people see that now I, I get a certificate which is kind of currency that I can move from this organization to that organization. So however uh, uh, good thought the organization might have that I want to retain the skill, I want to train, but we have seen a mark like up sometime even 3x more completion uh, by employees if they get something that they think they can carry forward to their next job. Yeah, but yeah. you know, I, so a few years back, I, I started my career as a programmer. If you give me a, an assessment on Java, C++ right now, I'll pass it. Don't, but don't, don't get me writing code. So, so certificate and assessments is, is good, but I, I claim that people can actually pass it and get it. It's not really a, a good testament of their skills. So uh, I, I agree uh, to you to some extent, but now that those assessments have changed. They have become more hands-on driven. But what, is, what I find it surprising, and I'm not endorsing that view, is that the organizations are again valuing those certificates by saying, that, oh, I'm looking for Java programmer. And one of the criteria is that if you're certified, you pass one particular stage of, say, shortlisting your resume, right? Yeah. I, I think we're also talking about an outdated model in general. I mean, the world is not heading towards Amdocs corporate structure, right? The world is heading towards freelance, independent, yes. specialists, not generalists. We're not evolving employees over the course of decades because they only stick around for 12 months. Yeah. Um, and so I think when you when you look at credentialing and certification and skill validation in the traditional model, a lot of this holds true. When you're thinking about it, uh, we no longer have a workforce that's going to have one job for 20 years or even five jobs for five years. They're going to work for five different companies within the same six-month period. Uh, and that's where it just completely upsets the traditional yeah. skill validation paradigm. Like, I don't have time to develop you. You have to show up day one effective in what I need you to do. And when you're, when you've got people coming and going with that level of fluidity, like I just don't have time for the traditional proxies to play themselves out. In a perfect world, I get to see you work in your job for six to nine months. I decide if you're not, if, whether or not you're any good, and then I keep your I don't. Um, that's just not how it works anymore. So I need much faster, shorter cycle proxies for what actually is effective. And Again, I, you know, looking at my Odesk Upwork experience, uh, I can look through somebody's work history on Odesk. I see you know, the star ratings. I can see what projects they worked on, who they worked for, how much they earned. Um, I can just get much more granular detail in that marketplace style than I would get out of a traditional resume. And you know, when I we are still hiring full-time employees. Skillshare is more of the traditional corporate structure, but um, I think we are. We are constantly looking for the replacement for actually them working for us. The next best, best thing, in my opinion, is not an interview. It's not a certi certification. It's somebody in my company has worked with that person before and can vouch that they can do what they say because we've seen it. Like yep. That sort of eliminates all of this. Um, but I, I think what is really unknown is as we move to a, uh, I guess, a heavier dosage of freelance in the workforce, it's going to upend a lot of these traditional. We won't have learning and development because they're not employees. The, the uh, other, so it upends everything. Yeah, I mean, for me, the other thing is why does this data even matter? Why do we need to be issuing credentials at all? Mm -hmm. What's in it for the individual? What's in it for the business? So, you know, I, as a manager, I can sit down with a new hire and I can say, this guy doesn't know what he's doing, but who else knows? You know? or this person is really good at these things, who else knows? The, the problem is not who should have credentials and who shouldn't. The problem is where does the data live and what do we do with it? Yeah. And if you are doing it right, you're, you're collecting data to say, who's the best person to put on this project? Who's the next most qualified person to you know, take this new job or, or work on this you know, new initiative that we have? And until you know the skills that people have so to deploy those resources effectively, it's a really tough challenge internally. And then secondly, um, we, we have to keep in mind what is in it for the individual. You already mentioned no one wants to go through an assessment. People hate being assessed. People hate being measured. But people love being recognized. Yep. 
they love having opportunities. We have to, if we're talking about how we, you know, why does credentialing matter, what we have to deliver is opportunities for people. They want to grow. They want to have new experiences. They want to feel like they're contributing in new ways. And until we can deliver on that, sort of the measurement stuff doesn't really matter all that So much. let me probe on that, because that, that's the crux of the currency, right? For us, for, for us to have a fluid economy of human resources, you need to be able to move around from, yeah. from, uh, from in, in, in the neighborhood of your realm of job, right? Let's say you're a designer, right? Uh, and that's going to be roughly your career throughout your life, or even a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, but roughly that neighborhood. So to be that, and for me to be worth, uh, to, for people to know what I know how to do, there needs to be some sort of translatable uh, sort of signal throughout my life. So would you, the question for you and, and for you guys, would you be better off if there were a third party, unpartial, non-competitive, that would say this is kind of the certification yeah. for a designer? Would that unlock your market? Um, I, I guess the it's so hard to get the credential to match exactly what I need, mm -hmm. right? So you can tell, you know, I, and actually I don't need a third party to tell me if you're a good designer. Show me your portfolio. Mm -hmm. Show me your GitHub repository. Like, I don't, uh, I can, if I can actually see your work and I can talk to people who have worked with you, so to get to the soft skills, if I can get to the soft skills, like, guy works his ass off, he's not a jerk. Okay, great, check that. And then I can actually see the work of what they've actually produced. That's much more interesting to me. Um, I think you know, LinkedIn was trying to get to some of this with the with the skills. Yeah. Um, if you looked at my link, look at my LinkedIn profile. According to LinkedIn, I'm an expert at 99 things. <laughs> I can assure you, I am not an expert at 99 things. But so, like, they were trying to pull that data together through external validation. It but, just didn't work because it was garbage in, garbage out. But what out of those 99 things that people said about you, you want to? you want to take right. out and, and put in your CV. Right. That's what makes the difference. I think yeah. on the LinkedIn, people are very generous in terms of saying that, oh, you're good at that. That's what I don't yeah. mean. If, if the bigger question is that, are we saying that we can't assess people at all? If we are, if we are saying that there is some way of assessing, the assessment need not be a, a typical certification exam, which is like multiple choice question. The assessment can be to reviewing the project work. The assessment can be to speaking to people who have worked with you in the past and yep. taking their feedback. If, you, if, you, if we increase the definition of assessment, and if the answer is that yes, there is a way to assess people to know whether they really know that a skill, whether they have worked on those areas or not. If the answer is yes, then we can always like, uh, I, like as, as, as a learning provider, I would be like big endorser of this kind of view that let me be the training provider, let me uh, uh, have someone learn those skills, and let someone else assess, so that there's a, these two act as a independent bodies. And I see it working it very well in few areas. Like, again, I'll give example to cloud. If someone wants to hire, say, Amazon cloud architect, and Amazon says that, yeah, AWS says that, yes, we have tested it, this guy knows, we, he did all the assignment, he did all the project that we test, and we say he's a tick mark from our side. If anyone is looking to hire a AWS architect as part of team, and if they see a yeah. certification from AWS, I think that's a, that's a great standard for them to hire. And, and I already see the market playing that way. But first, it's interesting that we started talking about lifelong learning, and then we are having a conversation that is completely in the realm of performance management and, and assessment. But also, you, know, you, you talked about uh, certification. So if you look at what's happening today in the cloud space, for instance, so you can go and get an Amazon Web Services certificate. And you could probably go and get the same thing from, from Google and the same thing from the different cloud. And I would say this is, this is temporarily because they are, each one of them is proprietary right now. Yeah. But if you look at other industries, how it would work, eventually they will have to, to cooperate and eventually it will become commodity. And then there's no need for the certification anymore. You know, in, when you look at those spaces, um, there are no certification because it's the industry regulating itself and not one one body, one Amazon. Like today, Amazon has some kind of a, 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 a power over the industry because their platform is, I guess, people are saying used the most. I'm not endorsing Amazon, um, but used the, the most, and then their certification worth the most in, in the industry. But it, it's short sighted. So, whatever currency you will try to make, if it's not common to everyone, if it just, sorry guys, but if it's only coming from each one of you, it's not going to last for long. Mm -hmm. It'll have to be some, somehow shared, and I still think it will be based on what people claim they have and can prove, as you yeah. just 
talked about. There was an interesting startup uh, years ago, and I don't know what ever happened to them. I don't, I don't think it ended well, but they had a, um, they would basically have you rate. So it's like, all right, I worked for both of you. Which one of you is better at X? And so by constantly swapping out you know, the combination of the four of us asking which one of you is better, they were trying to get to a stacked ranking of anyone who had that skill, what does the general collective wisdom say about each of these people? But then either um, people will become jerks or they become very, very generous. Well, yeah, it's you, is it a popularity them. contest or is it a skill assessment? Yeah, yeah. So it was just an interesting approach. Let me ask you guys a different question. I think part of the, part of the uh, if you look at the academic world and the bachelor's, master's, PhD world, sort of the traditional sort of uh, higher ed world, you, you, I always thought that part of the value of that degree was the sorting, the sorting and the sifting uh, meaning that the admissions office sort of goes through and sort of figures out if you're going to be a, a potential fit, you know, and, and, you know, whether that's good or bad, I mean, that's a whole different discussion, but there is value in that. Um, it, you know, you could and think of... As long of, as the sailing club scholarship isn't uh, involved. Yeah, that's a whole different subject, <laughs> yes. Uh, but, but, I mean, there, there is a sorting, sifting mechanism that happens. Is there such a thing that, that should should happen in, in lifelong learning or is that, how is that value sort of, or, or that sort of selection happening? Because it seems like in many of the platforms you could take whatever course you're ready for, right, skills wise. Yeah, I think the way I would answer that is the old world is binary credentials. If I get a CPA certification, that means I meet some arbitrary threshold of mastery. Um, if I'm miss the, you know, if I don't pass the exam by two questions, yeah. you have no way to show any expertise. On the other hand, if you have 100 CPAs sitting in a room, who's the best? Who's the best at M&A? Who's the best at securities? Who's the best at privacy? I mean, the problem is, is I, I think, solved by having a, a mechanism in which you certify skills at different levels of mastery and allow sort of individuals to say, I may be only a level two expert and I want to be a level six expert. What is my path to get from there to there? Um, and so the, for me, the gating mechanism ought to just live with the motivation of the individual mm -hmm. and where, you know, from wherever they sit and whatever aspirations they have, but they need a way to signal beyond the binary, right? That's just such yeah. a huge limitation that we have yeah. in credentialing. Yeah, I, I just think the the best signal is seeing the actual work. Mm -hmm. yeah. like, and now, unfortunately, that's slow and painful to produce in mass. It doesn't, um, it doesn't scale well as a you know broader assessment mechanism. But uh, that's you know as part of every class on Skillshare, there's a project. So yeah. you take the class, you watch the video, you ask questions of the instructor, but then you actually produce something, you upload it, you get feedback. Because yeah. if you're not putting it to work and you can't actually see what you produced at the end of it. I can take the how to draw a tree class all day long. It wasn't until I actually uploaded the picture of my tree, and I can draw a damn good tree for the record, uh, that you know, I had proof I can draw a tree. Uh, yeah. you know, so I think the, uh, there's, no, there's no shortcut to that of actually just yeah. seeing and, the work. And so I, I agree to that view that projects are become, going to become a reality to show what you have learned, and that's what we also do, and we see a lot of value in that. What I also see is that some kind of pre-assessment will also become a reality, where you pre-assess and suggest whether you should send him to a foundation course in that area if he's interested, or you send them to an expert course depending upon where he stands. So I mm -hmm. see that also going forward becoming, most of the co companies today are in the race to acquire more and more customers, so that maybe they are admitting a lot of people, but at some point of time, they have to do some kind of getting to make sure that the quality that they're producing is Yeah, good. and I agree for certain, uh, industries but you know when you think about sort of solving the whole currency world and, and design may be uh, very helpful to see the work but I'm thinking well is for example in other areas where you have to test things that are very very non visible uh, empathy or creativity or yeah. or uh, leadership God, what is that right so yeah. how do you uh, you know, sort of assess that in, in, in many jobs you need those types of uh, hard to find skills and, and I'm not sure that the college itself has a good answer. Definitely not. Uh, but, I, I would yeah. say definitely not and, yeah. but, and but I'm not sure that there's a solution for that but we also need to acknowledge that there's any kind of certification. I agree that colleges and universities do have, you know, the sorting mechanism is useful 
but there's a shelf life for, for the certificate. Yep. I'll yep. give you my example. I've got a law degree. Don't get legal uh, <laughs> advice from me. I've got my MBA from NYU with, it says with the, um, in finance, don't get financial advice from me. Uh, it's been a long time ago. I haven't been practicing that. So what's use of that? So it's, it looks very nice in my office, but that's all it is right yeah. now. Well, we have uh, two and a half uh, minutes. I don't know if uh, anybody has a question, but I was going to, uh, if, if, there, if there's a hand, we could take a question or two. If not, I can do a rapid fire fi uh, finale here. So let me ask you guys this, uh, since there's no, uh, no takers here. Um, what would be the one thing, you know, when you think about outside of your, of your uh, specific company and just think more globally, what would be the one thing that you'd, you'd hope uh, we could solve, uh, if there's one thing, I mean, uh, there may be a couple, uh, to actually get to the nirvana that hopefully we all want to get to, which is a world where fluidity of human resources and sort of value of human resources is fair. In uh, that, to me, it seems like a pretty good end goal in the next 20, 30, 40 years, hopefully. Uh, how do you get there? What would be the one thing that you, you'd, you'd want to see? I think it's what we said at the beginning, and you started with that, it's lifelong learning. I mean, the speed of change is so rapid that people really need to, to become lifelong learning. And whoever not going to get it is going to be out of job or their existing job in the next, I would say, two to three years. I've seen it happening in, in our industry. I've seen uh, entire areas of the business actually sh shrinking to the extent that the people that were the heroes in the past are now looking for a new job uh, and they need to reskill themselves. And they, they just, just didn't pick up the, the messages or what we try to help them become lifelong learners. Jonathan? I'd say outcome-based skill credentials that are accepted on the supply and demand side of the market is the nirvana, right? And from the degreed perspective, we hope that we have a meaningful contribution to that end. It's a hard problem. It's a two-sided two marketplace problem. You have to get the demand side using the language. You have to get the supply side using the language. It's going to take time. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's for me what would be the ultimate goal. Yeah. So my perspective, if you're driving a car and if you don't have insurance, it's okay. But if you are in, in a job and if you don't have, if you're not a lifelong learner, it's not going to work. Uh, I think for us, yeah, the, there's the phrase, uh, talent is equally distributed and opportunity is not. Um, you know, all, a lot of the skill validation it, uh, requires you to actually have the opportunity to show that you can do it. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of opportunity, you know, not, all, not everybody has access to, you know, Ivy League education. Um, how do we give people that kind of access to get, to learn yeah. the things they need to show that they can do it, to provide everybody with that validation that they actually do have the capability. That's, we, that's something we, we talk about a lot at Skillshare, is just how do we make it more accessible and, and you know, open up those opportunities for everyone. Great. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you for staying. Uh, uh, I want to give these guys a round of applause. Great.